Hello, Life Group Leaders. This is Pastor Tito here. Just wanted to share uh, just a short leadership training for you guys. Um, I, I was speaking with Miss Yvonne and with uh, Miss Jackie, and they just shared that um, it would be really helpful to have some practical tools for our Life Group Leaders just to help kind of do some training on the fly and on the go. So just wanted to share some thoughts. Uh, a lot of this is taken from a talk from a middle school pastor named Tom Shifshunis, who you probably don't know who that is, and that's totally okay. But he was the um, middle school pastor for a church called North Point in Georgia that had, uh, I think at the time, six campuses and um, was really in charge of being a leader over leaders. He was like the middle school pastor over the other middle school pastors. And they were reaching, gosh, just tens of thousands of, of middle schoolers. And and I'm not exaggerating on that. I promise. I'm not just blowing out a big number. But um, he shared this talk on being a safe place. And he opened up the talk with how Jesus ministered to the woman caught in adultery. And he said, it's interesting to see the things Jesus said, the things Jesus didn't say. Uh, just to familiarize you with the story, I, I know you know it. Uh, here's this woman. She was caught in the act of adultery. The Jewish religious leaders brought her out and said, hey, Jesus, we're going to stone this woman. Okay, the Bible says so. So what do you think about that? <laughs> what do you think about those apples? And then Jesus said, Jesus, stop. And and in Jesus's wise, you know, fully God, fully man way, um, asked just a brilliant question and Jesus was just so good at this kind of thing and he's like okay well how about the one who's never sinned cast the first stone uh, and and so of course of course as they thought about it and were convicted they realized well that's definitely not me and they they realized what Jesus was trying to do Jesus was giving them a lesson about grace and so Jesus confronts the woman and has a conversation with her and there's a lot of things he could have said a lot. Of, he, Jesus could have went into how she was ruining this man's family by uh, committing adultery with him. Jesus could have gone into how she's harming herself by doing these things. I mean, so many ways Jesus could have gone into, you know, how you're being in a bad example to other girls. I mean, Jesus could have really done a lot, lot. Um, but Jesus said, did anyone condemn you? And she said, no. And then Jesus does something. He gives her this, administers this grace. He says, well, neither do I. And then Jesus does something brilliant that I think I, this is an area where sometimes we fall short is Jesus gives her grace, but Jesus also hands her a lot of, lot of truth in a very short statement. He says, well, then go and sin no more. In other words, Jesus didn't say, hey, hun, what you did wasn't even bad. Like, gosh, love is love. Like, it doesn't matter. Jesus was honest with her about her situation. He said, you're sinning and you need to stop. Uh, and if you think about it, we deal with similar situations when we deal with students um, who come up to us and they're going through something and they want they, they share something real heavy. And they're t we're, we have to administer grace. Hey, Jesus still loves you. God still loves you. I still care about you. I don't think less of you for sharing the secret with me. I, I, I All those kind of things. We share grace. But at the same time, we have to share that truth as well. Uh, if you have a student who comes up to you and, and they confess that, man, I've been cutting or I've been doing this, then you have to be able to say, well, you need to stop. Like that can, that, that can really hurt you. And I want better for you and God wants better for you. So you need to stop. And that's what Jesus did. And um, as we think about this question, uh, or sorry, as we think about this, here's a question. How safe do we want to be as a life group leader? How honest can your students be with you? How much can they open up to you? And, and what have they opened up to you about? And in his talk, Tom talked about how there's kind of these different levels of safety that most students have. For instance, confessing that they cheated on a test. That, that does require a level of feeling safe, but it's kind of a lower level of safety versus them coming to you and, and having some secret about their parents that they haven't told anybody. Mom and dad are fighting or they're thinking about getting a divorce, uh, especially if they're church parents. And then doubts about faith, those are kind of on a next level where um, a lot of students don't feel comfortable, especially in church, talking about having doubts. But if you can be a safe place for them where they can process those things, I cannot even begin to tell you how beneficial that is for the development of a child's faith. And then pornography. When a student comes up to you and, and confesses that they've been looking at pornography, 
that that's one of the most jarring things for a student to feel safe enough to talk about that and then self-harm and then sexual identity those are all these huge areas especially in our climate um in uh where we are in youth culture and so i just wanted to ask this question and and just bring up a point that when when we have a secret we're constantly calculating how safe people are we're constantly calculating people from the safest to the least safe and let me just be honest with you your students are doing the same thing and my question is how are we opening the floor for students to know that they have an ear and to know that they have a safe place i think about my youth pastor when i was uh in eighth grade he became my youth pastor and he was my youth pastor till i graduated high school till i went to bible school eventually i came back from bible school and helped him plant a church and was his his youth pastor and kids pastor and worship pastor and cleaning crew person because we didn't have any staff and we're all doing it for free. Um, But here's where it started. He would um, take me home from church when my parents couldn't pick me up. He would uh, take me out to eat all the time. Like uh, going and getting Chinese food was our thing. Uh, And we would do that just, gosh, all the time. And, uh, he was really good at like reading me. So after church, a lot of times I, I didn't even realize I would do this, but I'd just be really quiet and kind of like linger around him. And he's like, Hey, Tito, do you need to talk? <laughs> and, and, and we would talk and he would, he always seemed to have space in, in his life, even after a really busy youth service and all the things that we would do. And, um, and I want you to think about who are the people in your life that are the safest for you? The people in your life that you that you know you could tell anything to. And what is it about them that makes them feel so open and inviting? I know sometimes we as leaders can look really, really busy. And so our students or those who we work with feel like they can't approach us. I know that's an area I'm always working at. Um, at least appearing less busy so that um, people feel comfortable taking uh, the time and just having the conversations. Uh, I think sometimes what we allow to happen in, in our life groups, if there's too much ribbing back and forth or the the group doesn't feel like a safe place or, or it's too big and there are just too many kids in our group and, and we're not able to have conversation or if we're never connecting with a student outside of the, the set life group time, those are all ways where we can be intentional about creating a safer place. And let me say, if you're hearing this, thank you so much for all that you're doing in uh, the, in the ministries that we're doing uh, between middle school students, between high school students, between young adults. Um, Gosh, I'm just so grateful for you and you don't hear it enough. And I don't, I don't say it enough, but I just have to let you know how grateful I am for you in this crazy crazy busy season where there's so many irons on the fire and you just have to know like you are our our first um gosh our front line you're our front level of defense you're doing the the boots on the ground hands-on ministry working with students working with young adults working with high schoolers working with middle schoolers and i'm just so grateful for you sticking it out in this season we um we lost an incredible um, leader and family when Jonathan and Dara left, uh, and when Nate left, and when Josh Freethy left, and um, when Pastor Mike left, even, a couple years ago. And I can't even begin to express how grateful I am for you for sticking it out with me and choosing to, choosing to love students and give of yourself when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you probably have better things that you could be doing. When you probably have things that show more results quicker, um, when Lord knows many of you have homework <laughs> and papers to grade and papers to write, some of you and hungry mouths to feed at home and gosh, you guys are insane and you're amazing. And I just want to say thank you. So I hope this training helps. Uh, periodically, we'll do some things like this. Uh, today was about being a safe place, and uh, hopefully this has benefit to you. Love you guys.